Hello, friends. Hello, internet. <laughs> we're doing it. Oh my gosh, we're doing it. We made it. You made it to this YouTube video. So congrats to you. But we all made it 10 years into the future. Time travel is possible. It just takes a long time. Thank you for joining me for the first episode. Wait, here we go. My name is Ashley Clements, and this is the Look Back Diaries. Smash cut to theme song. I don't have a theme song. How did Lizzie have a theme song? Did anyone ever question that? I mean, like, who wrote it? I mean, I know in real life it was Michael Aranda, but like in world, who made her a graphic? I mean, I guess it was Charlotte, right? Charlotte did all, <laughs> never addressed. So if you're watching this, I'm going to make the bold assumption that you know who I am and you have watched the Lizzie Bennet Diaries at some point in the last 10 years. If neither of those things are true, welcome. This is a weird way for us to meet, but you know what? That's fine. Weirder things have happened. Like for me one time I was cast in this little web series and then it turned out to be like a global phenomenon and win an Emmy. That was also very weird. But I know many of you have a deep connection to this show because I read your messages. And yet still, I had forgotten how intense the love is for this little show. And over the last, like, I guess nine years since the show ended, I have continued to hear from people who have discovered the show for the first time or are rewatching it. So I have felt the love for this show continuously over the last decade. But I really forgot just how intense it was during the year that it was on and just the response to the announcement that I was going to do this rewatch with you all, it took me right back there. And what a crazy, crazy time in my life that that was. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries premiered 10 years ago today. Well, today, the day I'm posting the video, not the day I'm filming the video because like Lizzie Bennet, I'm filming it a few days in advance. Actually, we shot once a month. We shot eight episodes plus a Q&A, which would come out to about 60 pages of dialogue that I was usually on, you know, every page of. I usually got a finalized script two days before that. And then I slept on it, it absorbed all my lines by osmosis, and it was super easy. <laughs> That's not how it worked. But actually, in the beginning, they told me, oh, it, don't worry about how many pages we're doing because uh, we're doing these jump cuts, so you don't actually have to learn your lines. <laughs> Which is how we started doing it. I would become like familiar with the scenes, but I didn't learn my lines. They were on a music stand. I think I'm the one who came up with the idea of a music stand, but so they would be just out of frame, and I would basically go like, my name is Lizzie Bennett. My name is Lizzie Bennett. And then they would jump cut in between. And what I eventually figured out after the first few months is that the day was a lot easier if I actually tried to learn all of the lines. You will notice though that there were jump cuts within the scenes at the beginning of the show and that eventually stops and that's because we would really learn the scenes and not need to jump cut, which we thought seemed more authentic. When you put jump cuts in the scenes, it seemed like Lizzie or Charlotte was maybe trying to like manipulate the story. That's, let's listen to all the tidbits you're getting behind the scenes knowledge of the show. And we shot the first batch of episodes probably in March. I auditioned in December, 2011. Callbacks were January, 2012. I know we were rehearsing by February, but I, th I think we shot in March, either late February, early March. It did feel like a long time before the show actually came out. I remember that, that we had just done all this work and then I didn't know. And then it came out. I think about 3,000 people watched it the first day and I was blown away. I could not believe that 3,000 people had watched the show. Because we didn't promote it, nobody promoted it. Hank didn't even talk about it on Vlogbrothers until the second episode came out. So I don't know actually who those 3,000 people were, but if you're one of them, how did you find, how did you know? Where did you come from? You are in a small group of people. If you watched this on April 9th, 2012, I watched it, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm in it. Okay, should we watch it now? Yeah, okay. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune What? Must, must be, in, be want in want of, of a, a wife. wife. Is that the only line that's from Pride and Prejudice that's in the show? It's the only one I'm aware of. 
but that is a direct quote. Oh, Lizzie, tell us about who you are, girl, girlfriend. I was wearing so much more makeup on the first day than any other day because the makeup artist did my makeup and after that I started doing my makeup because I didn't like it. It felt like Lizzie wouldn't wear that much makeup to me. But now that I'm realizing, like, this is how people met me and, like, to me, that much makeup really changes the way my face looks, which is probably partly why I didn't like it. I just was like, who is that? Yeah, did she really have this shirt made? That's pretty crazy. Katie Most had the shirt made because she was doing the props. I mean, we're doing math. <laughs> oh, Lizzie. Yeah. Oh, and I remember that we didn't film this one first because they wanted me to, like, ramp into it. They wanted me to, like... We'd rehearsed a bunch, but they still wanted me to... to... Anyway, so I think we shot this one third. Julia Cho. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare. I improvised that line. Thank you very much. And I did it every take, so they had no choice. Oh, Mama Bennett. That's what I call her. Probably one of my favorite things you got to do on the show. Three million dollars. Really, such an absurd outfit. Why would Lizzie have these? But we never established that. Did she take it from her mother's wardrobe, or is this something from like a dress-up box? You know, I can imagine a house with three daughters having a dress-up box. I had a dress-up box when I was little. Ah, we'll bake a pie. <laughs> I do like to bake pies, so. Really feels so outdated. Even ten years later. I mean, like obviously it was it was anachronistic then, but. Oh yeah, here's the continuity issues with my hair. Oh yeah, the gay serial killer line that was big on Tumblr because this is right around the time that Sherlock came out with Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh my gosh, Lydia's in the first episode. I forgot that. I. Everyone, this is my sister Lydia. Whoops. I may have to change the schedule of when my guests are coming. <laughs> she really does look like a teenager. What? Ooh, denied. Denied, sorry. Oh, that elbow. Yeah, there was a lot of commentary about her hyperextended elbows. I feel so short. But I think the YouTube algorithm used to favor shorter videos, and that was part of it. And now they favor longer videos, ironically. Uh, and I think there was also concerns about just, like, people not having long attention spans. And I, I don't think that's true. I mean, but later in the series, the episodes did get longer. I think the longest episode is about eight minutes, maybe? And the shorter ones are around three. And to start, they were all, like, three or four minutes, really, like, Vlogbrothers length. And, uh, and that was really what we thought people would watch. And they did. So, you know, they, they weren't wrong. I knew so little about it going in. I had never really, like, been paying attention to most of YouTube, YouTube culture. And uh, before I booked the role, I wasn't really familiar with what vlogging is. And so they told me to watch Hank, obviously, the Vlog Brothers. They told me to watch Grace Helbig. They gave me some other names. I was learning to vlog. And I remember them telling me, like, you know, more energy and can you talk faster and luckily I can talk very very fast you're welcome but that didn't always come naturally and it feels really artificial to do like when the camera is so close to to put that much energy out there I mean luckily I had a stage background so I thought of it kind of like reaching the back of the house but it's not typical on-camera acting at all on the other hand I was very very green and I hadn't really done a lot of on-camera acting so Lizzie Bennett was a real training ground for me because I would shoot the episodes and then, you know, within a few weeks I was able to watch them and go, well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> and I learned a lot that way. So that's the first episode. We meet Lizzie. Do we like her? I think so. It's so hard to detach from watching myself, even a decade later. I mean, in some ways it's weird because I look at that, that girl, particularly that girl with all that makeup on, because that doesn't even look like me later in the series. 
and I don't entirely feel like I'm watching myself and yet I'm very aware of the fact that I'm watching myself. So it's very hard for me to gauge like, oh, do we like this person? I think so. I mean, I guess you do. Obviously she's flawed, we know she's flawed. That's part of the point. But uh, people came back for more, so I guess they were into it. I guess you were into it, you're still here. And we meet Charlotte and we meet Lydia and everyone has such distinct personalities immediately. I think, I think, you know, it's a good, a good introduction. I do remember that when the episode came out, I was really bummed about my hair being in front of and behind my shoulders and because uh, I thought it looked weird. But I knew from then on that I would have to be in charge of my own continuity. That's also a thing that we stopped doing on the show, having me bounce around. We literally like moved my little stool around so that suddenly I'd be over here and then maybe I'd be over here. See, it's more dramatic that way. And eventually we stopped doing that. Okay, so I had this idea. I think it's, I think it's not gonna be a bad idea. <laughs> but during the show, people very much told me, don't read the comments, which is generally good advice on the internet. So I thought I would just check out the top comments. We'll see if this becomes a recurring feature or if it's a mistake. This series is a warm hug and I come back to it every year. Oh, thanks, Asha Chada. Uh, Chloe Riley says it's so strange watching this after all these years. And now I'm the same age as Lizzie, also master's student with a mountain of student debt and also single. Oh, Chloe, you're living, you're living the life. Funny story, way back when this started, I remember watching this and thinking it was real and that this Lizzie chick was such an idiot because obviously her mom made her that shirt because it was the opening line of B&B. &B. And then I realized I was the idiot because the girl's name was Lizzie Bennett, haha. <laughs> you would be very surprised how many people thought Lizzie was real. They really wanted that. They wanted it to feel like a real person vlogging and you'd be surprised how many people, even people who knew Pride and Prejudice thought, well, that's a weird coincidence <laughs> until, you know, they caught on eventually, eventually they, they did catch on. Well, that's the first episode. Thanks for joining me on this journey to the past. And if you're looking for more content, check out my Patreon. Patrons at the $10 and up tier get access to extended episodes and bonus content in addition to all the other stuff that I do on my Patreon. I'll be back in a few days with the next episode.